Welcome to another GCSCP related video. Today, what we will be doing is looking through the cardiac cycle, the pathway of blood, key terms and equations associated with this topic. Before we go into today's video, do not forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, that way you will not miss a video going forwards. Right, I have an exciting journey planned for you. We're going to go on a journey through the cardiac cycle, so following the pathway of blood through the use of a practical demonstration. Let's go. So the first thing you need to know, when you sit your GCSE PE exam and you see an image of a heart, you need to know the left and right side. When you look in an examination paper, the left hand side of the heart is actually on your right hand side. And that's what we're trying to illustrate today. So the oxygenated side of the heart is on my left, but if you were looking at it in an image, it would technically be on the right. And the deoxygenated side is currently on my right, but would be on your left as the viewer. So let's begin our journey in the right atrium. At this moment in time, you can see I'm dressed in blue. And this is because I am a high in carbon dioxide. I'm currently representing deoxygenated blood. So we're in the right atrium, which is the chamber at the top of the heart on the right hand side. From the right atrium, blood passes through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, which is the chamber located at the bottom of the heart. As the blood leaves the right ventricle, it passes through the pulmonary artery, which takes deoxygenated blood away from the heart to the lungs. As red blood cells come into the capillary, you can see that they are blue in color. Now, they are not blue in real life, but we illustrate this in images to show the fact that they are deoxygenated because they contain high levels of CO2. So, as the red blood cells come in, you can see that they are blue in color. CO2, so carbon dioxide, starts to diffuse from the capillary because there is a high concentration of carbon dioxide in this area. And as a result, the CO2 moves from the capillary to the alveolus. As the journey continues, you will see that the red blood cells become red in color. And again, this is because oxygen that is already in the alveolus starts to diffuse from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, meaning that the red blood cells now contain high levels of oxygen. Not only am I wearing the best shirt in the land, but I am now oxygenated because red blood cells are now carrying an abundance of oxygen. Our journey continues. So now we enter the pulmonary vein, which transports oxygenated blood to the left atrium. From the left atrium, this oxygenated blood passes through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. Now it's very important here that we recognize the left ventricle has a thicker muscular wall. And this is because the left hand side of the heart pumps oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. So for this reason, it needs to be strong, it needs to be powerful in order to eject that blood over a longer distance. When the heart contracts, oxygenated blood is forcefully ejected and pushed towards the aorta. The aorta is a large artery that transports this oxygenated blood away from the heart to the rest of the body. Think A away. Arteries take blood away from the heart and the aorta specifically takes oxygenated blood to working muscles. This helps us meet the demands of exercise. Following exercise, there is a buildup of carbon dioxide in working muscles. And this is a result of aerobic respiration. So oxygen has been used and as a waste product, carbon dioxide is produced. Now, CO2 needs to be removed from the body. So at this point, again, as you can see, I'm dressed in blue. This deoxygenated blood is transported via the veins away from the working muscles towards 
the heart via the vena cava and that deoxygenated blood comes back into the right atrium and the journey is then repeated. A couple of definitions and equations you need to know in relation to this topic. The first, cardiac output. Cardiac output refers to the amount of blood that is ejected from the heart per minute. You also need to know the definition for stroke volume. This is the amount of blood that is ejected from the heart per contraction. And you also need to know the equation for cardiac output, which is cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. Heart rate just simply refers to how hard the heart works, so how many times it beats per minute. Another term that you need to know in relation to the cardiac cycle is diastole. Diastole refers to the relaxation phase of the cardiac cycle, and you also need to know the term systole. Systole refers to the contraction phase of the cardiac cycle. Thanks for joining me today to look at the cardiac cycle, the pathway of blood, and some of the key terms and definitions associated with this topic. Everything that I've covered today, you need to know in preparation for your GCSE PE exam, but also it is quite useful for science slash biology. So please make the most of this video. If you enjoyed today's video, do not forget to subscribe, like, and comment if you have any questions in the section below. Thanks.